to a brand new episode of Below the Iceberg, the one and only podcast where we talk to real life two comma club winners. Whether you're a small business owner, an entrepreneur, a wannabe entrepreneur, or you've been in business for a while, you're sure to pick up some tidbits of actionable advice from these million dollar entrepreneurs. Now, if you don't know what a two comma club winner is, it is where somebody has built one funnel like a sales funnel, inside the ClickFunnels software and they have sold $1 million of sales through just that one funnel, which is an absolutely fantastic achievement. Now, in today's episode, I am really excited to be talking to Tom Gaddis, who still can't believe he has catapulted himself into a multi-million dollar business along with his partner, business partner, Nick. So let's dive in and find out what they do and how they achieve that coveted million dollar funnel. Okay, so welcome, Tom, to Below the Iceberg. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. And uh, I want to congratulate you on getting a Two Comma Club Award. That's awesome. Pretty pretty awesome. Pretty You can see it over my shoulder there. <laughs> <laughs> So what I like to do with my guests who come on is I like to go check out their social stats because it gives a good insight to our listeners to what people can achieve with small audiences and large audiences. Yep. So I had a quick investigate on on you and your uh, Uh business. (laughs) (laughs) So this is what I found out. So you your Facebook page is Offline Sharks, yeah? Yes. And it's got 4.3K followers. I see that you've also got a Facebook group with nearly 12,000 people in it. That is correct. Yep. Um, I checked out your Instagram. It doesn't look like you've touched that in quite a while. I do not touch Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Or, or pretty much any of the other social media platforms. No. So. Yeah, nope. I think it said uh, 94 weeks ago you touched it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> um, and you have an, a YouTube channel um, with about 480 subscribers. Is is that something that you're doing now or, or you're leaving? So that with, uh, well, with Offline Sharks, we run a, uh, a live show every week and we broadcast it from inside the Facebook group into our YouTube channel. All right. So my business partner... Nick Ponty, he has a YouTube channel that we actively promote. Ha-ha, so you I found that one. At, yeah, you can take a look at that one. Um, He's got about then, 10, 10. 8 thousand subscribers on that one. Yep. Yeah. So, and and then I have a, a podcast as, as well that's called What's the Secret that I actually just, actually just sunsetted that podcast because we're launching a new one. But when that podcast was rolling, uh, it's probably getting about a thousand to fifteen hundred downloads a month. All so. right, okay. So, do you want to tell our listeners what Offline Sharks is? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I got my start in the um, the digital marketing space, right? So, I had so well. Let me back up a little bit. Um, that well, that's what Offline Sharks is. Offline Sharks is. Uh, how to build, scale, and grow a digital marketing agency. We have an agency in Maui, Hawaii right now. Um, it does about half a million a year. Uh, pretty much runs by itself. Like we have very little involvement in that business. We've, you know, we've built out the processes, the systems. Uh, we outsource all the fulfillment. We have people that do the sales. So, you know, obviously it didn't start out that way. It started out with us doing a lot of the work. But today, you know, it pretty much runs... Uh, on its own. You know, we spend, we have like one meeting a month with the team where we go through the clients and talk overall strategy. Obviously we're communicating with them daily if they have questions and things like that. But yeah. for the most part, all the client interactions and all that stuff uh, we're not really dealing with. So, you know, that's uh, Offline Sharks and Remote Millionaires, which is our um, kind of higher level uh, program all, are all about that process, right? How we did that Right. All about how we've built that agency, how uh, how other people can do it as well, okay. and so that's that's what we do there. Okay, so was it offline sharks that you won the two comma club with? 
Yes. Well, offline sharks and remote millionaires are like the same. They're it's, like one in the same right. company. They're just different. Uh, they're just different products in the same thing. So, right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, offline sharks is the official company. Yeah. Right. Okay. So when was it when you actually got your two comma club award? When did you hit the? It's the been big? like two Christmases ago. We got that. Two Christmases ago. Okay. Yeah. So what's that? 20... 2020. 2020. <laughs> the brain's pickled <laughs> with years. Yeah. 2020. I just looked on the award. I was like, <laughs> wait, I bet it says right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So can you think back? Was the two comma club, was it a goal to achieve? Or did it just happen? No, it was, it was definitely a goal. And uh, I say that because, um, you know, when my business partner and I started Offline Sharks, like we, we knew no one in the industry, right? We had no experience um, really doing anything like this. Uh, and I had gotten a ClickFunnels account um, but I didn't, I didn't have the money. So I had, I'd seen this webinar with Russell Brunson and, uh, he was, he had this deal. It was like a thousand dollars and you got click funnels and a bunch of other training and stuff. And, uh, I didn't have the money to buy it. So I actually borrowed the money from a friend, a friend of mine, put the click funnels thing on his credit card and let me pay him back with payments over time. So, uh, that's how I actually got the click funnels account. And as we started like putting out these products and started having success, we were doing these product launches. I was like, man, we're going to get a two combo club award. And like, we'd be setting in, uh, you know, we started just in a, a spare bedroom at my business partner's rental house. Eventually, you know, we ended up in a, in an office and, uh, and nicer houses. Right. And so I was always like, we're going to hang that two comma club award right over there on that wall where we sit and stare every day while we're working on this stuff. And uh, yeah, and then we got it. So it was really, really, it was really, really special because of that, especially, you know, being in that position of really believing that this could work, that I could, that I could use, you know, the software that I could do this, um, but really not having any evidence that that was the case, right? Like everybody around me thought I was crazy. <laughs> they thought I was crazy, right? But now so, they call me and ask me for business advice. So. Yeah. <laughs> There's the, there's the shift. <laughs> so when um, were you watching the numbers? Did you know that you were going to hit it or did it pass you by? And then you went, oh, we've hit it. Yeah, we, it actually passed us by. And then we're like, oh, wait, we, we like we can qualify for this thing. So we sent in all the stuff and, and, and got accepted. Yeah. And did you have a celebration then? We did. So it was uh I made a little video of me and me in front of my Christmas tree because it was Christmas when it showed up. Right. And, uh, unfortunately my business partner had, he was traveling at the time. So, you know, like we called each other, we were like, man, this is awesome. Uh, I, I made a little video showing the award. And then I went out on my, I was living in Maui at the time. I went out on Maui, sat on my front lanai and I smoked a Cuban cigar and it was great. <laughs> it, was <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> So when you hit it, then did you just carry on as normal? Yeah. You know, the interesting thing about like being, uh, in, in business for me and being an entrepreneur is like, for me, being an entrepreneur has been a process. Like I've had to develop and, uh, and hone a lot of skills over the years that I just didn't have. I wasn't very good at, I, you know, I've had to work on them. Um, the other part of it too, is it's been very, you know, the reality of building a uh, multi-million dollar business is different from the fantasy that you have when you don't have one, right? <laughs> there were lots of things that I thought it was going to be that it turned out not to be. Like, um, for instance, I remember one time sitting with my wife and we had just, we had done maybe like one, two product launches and they'd gotten a little bit of traction, right? And I was sitting with my wife and I was like, man, if we could just make $10,000 a month off of these product launches, we'll be set. We'll never need anything again. Like we won't have to worry about money at all. And uh, that of course turned out to be not true. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> not true. Um, but you know, like that kind of, as your business grows, 
you know, at some point the money doesn't really become the driving factor so much anymore, but there's always more to do. You, you know, you're, you know, when you're invested in uh, being good at what you do and growing a quality business, like, you know, you start to look around and go, oh, well, we can get better at this. We can improve with this. Like, oh, we think we can serve our customers better by offering this and doing that. And so, you know, there's never like, um, I mean, we've done it pretty fast, right? Like, we literally went from zero dollars, you know, to now we do about 2.5 million. We've been, we've done 2.5 million in the past two years, but we did that in literally like five years, you know, which isn't very long. And so like, we've always felt, it's always felt like at every stage of the way that we were like, there was so much to do. And yeah. we were always at this kind of awkward phase in our business, right? Where like, and we feel that way now, like now I feel that way. Like, we really want to get to five and 10 million. Yeah. Right. And, but we're like, you know, so, you know, the, the, the goals, the things that you, that you want to do change and your, you know, the reasoning behind doing them and stuff changes as well. Um, so I, you know, yeah, I mean, we would definitely want to keep going and growing. That's for sure. Okay. So let's do a little bit of a rewind. Now I'm going to take you back to your childhood. Okay. What, what did your childhood look like? So uh, I'm born and raised in Oklahoma, right? So I was born in Sand Springs, Oklahoma. So I'm a, a country boy in this big, scary city, you know, <laughs> just trying to find my way. Um, no, so, uh, you know, my family was, uh, uh, you know, um, I don't even know if we were middle class, like maybe lower middle class. Like my dad worked at a Wonder Bread Bakery. My mom worked for the city of Sand Springs. We lived way out in the country, uh, we didn't have a lot of money. We were, you know, constantly always, uh, they were constantly always struggling with bills and things like that. Um, at a young age, I, I, I got interested in magic. I got a magic kit when I was 12 and I decided I wanted to be a professional magician. Right. right and okay. so um, I eventually did that. I was a professional magician in my twenties and I did that for a while. And then. So did you, you know, go to college? I did not go to college. Nope. So graduated you know, high school. I wasn't a very good high school student either. I mean, <laughs> I didn't make like great grades. I like high school to me was just kind of like, I just sort of wanted to get through it. Like I didn't really have any desire to go to college or anything like that. So what was your first job when you left school? Uh, uh, when I left school. So I was in the restaurant business. All right. Okay. So, yeah. I was in the restaurant business and, uh, you know, I started as a busboy, became a waiter, was a bartender, eventually became a, a restaurant manager. That's what I was doing uh, before I started my business. I was actually a manager for the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company in All Maui, right. Hawaii. And uh, I had worked there eight months when they fired me. And right. so when they fired me, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'll just start my own business. Let's give that a go. <laughs> Why did they fire you? <laughs> um... <laughs> Not doing my job. That's why <laughs> <laughs> I hated it. Right. Like, well, you know, like my plan when I went to, when we, so when we decided to move to Maui, that was 2010. And, uh, I was a restaurant manager at the time and I, I hated it. I didn't want to be a restaurant manager anymore. I really wanted to do my own thing. And I'd been trying to get this business going on the side. And so when we were going to move to Maui, I thought that was going to be the perfect opportunity to make a clean break from the restaurant business and start, you know, uh, a digital marketing agency in Maui. And okay, uh, so how did you, how did you think that you were going to do that? Where did that come from? If you were a restaurant manager and then you just randomly thought you'd start a digital marketing agency. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't random. There's a, there's a, there's a process there. So let me just kind of back up to how I got into digital marketing in the first place. Yeah. Right. So, uh, I was working as a personal assistant for a writer for a short period of time. And we needed to learn social media to like social media was just coming around. Internet marketing was just sort of getting around. And so I had to like start, start learning about it to uh, help with the, this writer I was working for. And so I got interested in it. Right. So was and this before like, the Bubba Gump then? Yeah, this is before the Bubba Gump. All so right. it appealed to me. But then eventually I wasn't working for the writer anymore. I went back to the restaurant business 
And uh, I'd kind of just sort of been dabbling and, you know, buying products and courses on digital marketing and reading books on it and stuff like that, just on the side. And uh, I got involved in this thing called the 30 day challenge it was by Ed Dale and Dan Rain. And the goal was to make your first dollar online in 30 days. Okay. And so I followed their little process. So when they, was that? They, this is, man, gosh, this had to be like 2008, 2009. Yeah, Maybe the, 2007. I don't even remember yeah, when they put this thing out. There wasn't much about then, though, was there, for that sort of information? It was no, there wasn't. And, uh, well, a lot of the stuff that was out, like, you know, Frank Kern was putting out, like, a lot of high-ticket products. You know, Ryan Dice, you had all those, all those guys, Andy Jenkins, doing these big-ticket uh, launches. But I could never afford to buy any of that stuff. So when this 30-day challenge thing came along, it was free. I was like, well, I'll give it a try. And yeah. uh, basically it was like, they showed you how to pick a niche, how to do keyword research, how to build a WordPress website, how to do some SEO. And the whole goal was, you know, you had some affiliate stuff on there and you'd make a sale. Hopefully within 30 days, you'd make your first dollar. That was the goal. Well, I did that. I made more than a dollar in 30 days. Um, and I had this little site. It was on uh, how to take surveys online. And it started generating like a hundred bucks a month. But I could never get it to generate more than that. And I could never scale that business out. Like I, I never built more sites. I just, I really struggled with, that was really all it did. Like I got this $100 every month, which is great, but I couldn't really uh, get it to move any further. Right. And then someone told me, they were like, hey, Tom, like you've learned all these skills. Like you know how to build a WordPress website. You know how to do SEO, like local businesses need help with that stuff. Why don't you just charge them and help them? And I thought, mm, I don't know, well, I'll give it a try. So I went into, I think this auto mechanic place and like I sold them a website for $800. And I was like, what, wait a minute. So like, <laughs> I've been struggling all this time, only making a hundred dollars a month, right? I talked to one person and I made 800 bucks. I was like, well, this is great. This is like way better than that. And so um, then I was just kind of doing it on the side as sort of a side hustle. Right. right okay. And, uh, so then when we were going to go to Maui, I thought, oh, well, this will be the perfect time to break away. My wife was not so convinced. <laughs> she was like, Hey, you've never even been to Hawaii. Like maybe you should have a job when we get there. I saw the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company was hiring. And so I went through this interview process, really just kind of make her happy. Right. And, uh, when they asked me how much money I wanted to make, like, I told them a really high, what I thought at the time was a really high amount because I didn't want the job, right? <laughs> and then they came back and they were like, okay, that sounds good. I was like, so anyway, I, so then I sort of had to take the job. Um, what made you move to Hawaii then? So my wife had, had, she's from Oklahoma as well. She's from Broken Arrow, but her and her mom and her brother and sister, they had all moved there when she was younger. So she actually graduated high school from Lahaina Luna on Maui. And she was always telling me like, oh, we should go visit. We should go visit. And I was like, eh, you know, we had a year, we had, we had a da two daughters and we had a year before our oldest daughter had to start school. And I've never been afraid to like move around and, and go to different places. And so I was like, look, if we ever wanted to move there, like we should do it now so that if we don't like it, we can come back and we don't have to take the kids out of school and all that stuff. So she was like, all right, sounds good. So we sold everything and we flew to Hawaii and that was 2010. And uh, we stayed there for 11 years. Oh, and wow. then, yeah, last August, we relocated to Las Vegas. So I'm in uh, Nevada. And we did that just because we wanted, you know, our girls are getting older. They're 15 and 13 now. Um, we wanted to do more traveling and it was just really hard to do from way out there. So now we're here in Vegas. Right. Okay. So, so you quit the job then at Bubba Gump. Got fired. Oh, you got fired. Yeah. It was a voluntary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then what but was you know, what's, what's ironic is that Bubba Gump sh company has closed. The pandemic shut them down. Oh, is it? So they're, they're no longer there. Right. Yeah. And like oh. the pandemic blew my business up. So I was like, <laughs> sweet revenge sweet a, revenge karma always comes back around <laughs> <laughs> yep so you got fired then what was the plan what was your what was your brain thinking man i was like well look i need to get some clients because i'm gonna do this 
I've been doing it as a side hustle, right? Let's get some clients here on Maui. And uh, I filed for unemployment, right? And uh, so I started collecting unemployment and I thought, well, that'll give me a little bit of a cushion while I get this business going off the ground. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to get clients. I'm doing all that stuff. I, I see the webinar for ClickFunnels. I buy the ClickFunnels software. I've kind of got that in the background. Um, I'm trying to get clients. Nothing's really working. So how, I all you, of a sudden, how were you trying to get clients? What were you doing? I was doing direct mail. I was going and visiting people. I was doing networking. You know, all the standard stuff that you would do. Yeah. I just wasn't closing any deals. I was having a lot of meetings, but I just wasn't closing deals. And uh, I didn't really know what to do, right? And uh, and then, like, I get this letter from the state of Hawaii that says, hey, man, you've been on unemployment too long. Like, we're going to send you one more check, and then we're not paying you anymore. And I'm like, holy crap. Like, now what do I do? Like, I, you know, I got a wife. I got two kids. I... Uh, I really don't want to get a job. Like I'd really like to make this thing work, but I wasn't really sure what to do. And, and like, right after that letter came, I saw a guy online and he had this, um, he had this idea. He had this jumbo postcard and he would like divvy up each side with seven ad spaces and he would sell the ad spaces to local businesses. And then he would mail this postcard out to 10,000 residents in the area. And um, the thing that appealed to me about it was you didn't need any money to do it. Like you literally collected the money first and then you used the money that everybody paid you to do the printing and the design and the mailing. And I thought, well, I don't know, I'll give this a shot. So I went down to uh, Office Max, I spent $30. I had them make up a uh, just like a, a mock-up of this card that was laminated. Yeah. And I just started walking into businesses and saying, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to print a card. It's going to look like this. Um, I might have one down here. Hold on. Yeah, this is the first one I did. All right, okay. And so I just started walking into businesses and selling these. And in seven days, like... In seven days, I had sold uh, six, there's 16 spots on here. I had sold, uh, but some people bought multiple spots. So 14 businesses gave me money. How much, I had were, you, seven, how much were you selling the spots for? Uh, $500. So I had $7,000 in revenue and 4,000 of that was profit after I paid for the design, the printing and the mailing. And uh, so this is what launched my agency. All then right. I, I just started doing these on a regular basis and I would go to the people that would sign up and say, Hey, while I was doing your ad, I took a look at your website and uh, it looks like you haven't updated it since 1992. <laughs> like, would you like me to help you do that? And they would say, okay. Cause they trusted me. Right. Yeah. And so that's how I grew my agency. I got a question in the UK yep. that in the UK that wouldn't fit through our letterboxes. <laughs> So it doesn't hear either, but what they do is the male people will will like bend it. They don't crease it, but they'll bend it like this. And then they'll put all their other letters and things in it. And they'll stick it in the mailbox like that. All right. So when people pop it out. Yeah, but this little thing was, uh, was a game changer for me. And ironically enough, this is what my first digital product was about. Right. I taught people how I was doing this. And uh, I made a little course. It was like five videos. And uh, I gave them the templates. I had an upsell for the templates. And I sold like 2,000 of those things. It's crazy. Cool. So after you did that, how long did you, how long did you do that for, did you say? Uh, I, had the, I started the agency in like 2012, 2013. So, you know, the agency was going and growing all in the background. And then we started Offline Sharks in 2016. All right. Okay. So what was your, what was your agency called before? Uh, it was called Hands Off Media. All right. Okay. And you just basically did those postcards. Yeah. Well, I did other services too. Like I built websites and, right. and social media management, things like that. That's actually how I met my business partner in Offline Sharks because I was getting a lot of clients but I didn't want to do the fulfillment. And so I had heard that there was this guy on the island that was also doing websites. He was trying to get started. He was just starting out. 
Right. And I thought, hmm, I wonder, I bet I could pay him to do the fulfillment and I'll just get the clients and he can do the fulfillment. So I reached out to him and we met and he was like, yeah, sounds like a pretty good deal. And uh, so he was help. We were helping each other with client work and he was trying to get his own agency started. And then I put out a course about that postcard and yeah, I sold, you know, all the copies. And one day I was talking to him and I was like, Hey man, like I put this course out. I sold all these copies. I have this email list now, like, but it's a lot of work. Like, would you be interested in helping me maybe grow this? We could put out more products, talk about what we're doing on our agencies. And he was like, okay, let's do it. So we, we started offline sharks. We put out our first product in 2016 and that's it. The rest is history, I guess. <laughs> so what did you, when you did your first course, did you use ClickFunnels for that? I did. And how yeah. Did you... So I built the, all the sales pages and the membership area and ClickFunnels, everything. And how did you promote that? that... So all, all through affiliates. So I, I launched it on a platform called Warrior Plus, which is kind of like JVZoo and ClickBank. It's a place where you know, you can create a product and you can put it on there and then affiliates will look for products to promote. Um, since I had bought a lot of products in the how to start an agency space, uh, one of the ways that I got my course off the ground was I reached out to people that I had been longtime customers of. So there were a few, uh, there were two or three people that I had bought a lot of their products. They put out products on how to start an agency. Right. So I figured, well, their email lists would probably like my product because that's what I do, agency clients, right? So I reached out to them and was like, hey, look, I've been a longtime customer of yours. I really love your stuff. Some of them I'd talked to before. And I was like, look, I'm, I'm putting out this product. I'm just wondering if you'd mind promoting it. And much to my surprise, they were like, oh man, that's awesome. I'd love to help you out. So they promoted it. And it turns out a couple of them were like two of the biggest affiliates on that platform. <laughs> so like once they started mailing for it, like all the other affiliates saw they were mailing for it. And so they started requesting to promote it. And then uh, that was it. Bingo. Yeah. So when you started then, so you, you joined with Nick. Yep. What was your first product that you put out? It was called Fast Cash Website Audits. Okay. Fast Cash Website Audits. And uh, what was interesting about, um, interesting about that product was, uh, one, in the, I was looking at the market of people that were putting out products for people trying to start agencies. And, uh, and one thing I noticed is like in our own agencies, we were doing a lot of websites, right? Like we were doing a lot of websites, but no one was talking about that in the, in the space. Like they were all talking about how to do social media. They were all talking about how to do, um, how to do SEO. They were, all, they were talking about all these other things, but websites, like no one ever talked about like how to do websites and how to get website clients and stuff like that. And so I did a little research on past products and I noticed like there was a time when building websites for businesses and getting paid was a big topic and people had sold a lot of units of their products that were, that were on that topic, but uh, the market had kind of moved on, right? Like right. in a market when people, you know, people come along, they're like, oh, it's all new and then it's not. And so I thought, well, if those products sold before, they will probably sell again, right? What were you looking on, on affiliate? On the affiliate. Yeah, you can look on Warrior Plus and look back at like what products people put out and right, and what what they do, you know, what were the best sellers and things like that. And so we had a method of getting website clients where we were uh, we would go to them and say, hey, like we notice your website looks a little outdated. We can come in and put a plan together, show you exactly what's wrong. We only charge a couple hundred bucks to do that. It'll also give you an analysis of your competition. How you, how you can get better, how you can show up better online and improve your website. And that was a foot in the door strategy we were using to sell websites and, and other services. And it was working really well. So that's what that course was about. That course was about how we were doing that, what that process looked like, how we charge, how we got the clients. Um, 
and that, and that did really well. And so all of the courses and things we put out are based off of things that we actually do in our agencies, right? So, right. Um, and we still have the agency today, right? Like it still operates. Um, and then the other, you know, the other part of that too is a lot of people, you know, Warrior Plus uh, kind of has like a, I mean, there's some questionable vendors on there. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> there are some <laughs> questionable vendors on there. And, uh, and that leads a lot of people to stay away from that platform. But what we found is by coming in and being a solid, reputable vendor, by treating our customers right, by delivering fantastic customer support, we were like a ray of sunshine to people. Because like they would email us and we would answer them and they would be like, oh my God, I can't believe you answered me. Like no one ever answers me. Right. And like we would do that. And so like we've, we've really focused on customer support. And I think that's one of the reasons we've grown so quickly and we, we still launch products on that platform. And uh, I mean, we're one of the bigger vendors on there and it's because of that, right? It's because even if, if you're in a market or you're in a platform where uh, or a niche maybe where people can, maybe they consider it scammy. Maybe they consider the platform not the best. Like I wouldn't let that deter me as long as I was doing my business the right way, right? Because if you're in a niche like that and everybody else is is being shady, but you're not, you're going to stand out above all the other people. And, and they will eventually, you know, the customers will eventually find you and they'll love you because you're different. You're not like everybody else. Yeah. So which... What was the product that you launched that got you the Two Comma Club? So we had a private coaching funnel that we were running, and that's what got us the Two Comma Club award. So it was like a higher ticket thing where we were taking people hand in hand and doing that. Okay, so was that two people who had already bought something already from you? Well, we rolled it out to our internal audience, um, and then we started running paid traffic to it. So... Uh, that program is now Remote Millionaires, right? So right. it was, we, re, we rebranded it and renamed it. So um, yeah, we, we do it internally. We also run it with affiliates. And then uh, we just started recently running paid traffic to it to drive more people and all that stuff. All right, okay. What traffic sources are you using? So our main, our main traffic source is our internal list at this point and affiliates, right? Um, that's how we've built pretty much our entire business is through that model. Uh, but right now we're running Facebook ads and some YouTube ads, right, uh, right. trying to see how layer that in and see how it goes. Have you, so what, how is YouTube working? A lot of people are moving to YouTube, aren't they recently? Yeah. I mean, we've had some moderate success with it. Like, I mean, we're running, we're driving people to an application that they then get on a phone call for a higher ticket thing. So, you know, we haven't started running traffic to like a lot of our lower cost stuff yet. Um, mainly just because the affiliate side of things work so well. It's really interesting that you bring this up because, you know, you know, that saying the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. <laughs> yeah. So we've, we've built an entire business by doing product launches and through affiliates, right? So whenever we do a product launch, we get anywhere from two to 4,000 new customers in the door. And not only do we not spend any money, but look, we actually make money off of the launch and we have a whole process that happens after. So, but we've always thought, oh, if we could just run paid traffic, Oh, if we could just run paid, we just really want to run paid traffic, right? So we've been on this mission to figure out paid traffic. But whenever we talk to people that run paid traffic and are really successful, and we show them what we're doing with the affiliate stuff, <laughs> they go, oh my God, can you teach us how to do the affiliate stuff? We really want to do the affiliate stuff. Because each thing has its pros and, right? Each thing has good, good and bad stuff. And so, um, yeah, it's interesting. Now we're trying to like, have a good hybrid of the two, right? right. Like use the, the paid traffic to supplement what we're doing and all that stuff. But So how much, if somebody was thinking of setting up affiliates then on their funnel, what sort of percentages do you give to your affiliates? So I think there's two things to say about that. Number one is if you're brand new, you should not be afraid to give away more. Okay, so um, on my first product launch, uh, I had like a, 
I mean, the front end product was like $12. The upgrade was $24.95. I gave away 100% of the front end right. and 50% of the upgrade. So, you know, you want to make it appealing, especially if you're new and you don't have a track record, right? Because uh, the affiliate space, like all of those people know each other. They all do promos back and forth, especially the big ones. The big affiliates are not just going to come and support you because you put out a product, right? Most of them uh, are looking for uh, people to partner with that are going to be able to send sales their way too, right? So the big affiliates, they promote each other because it's good for both their businesses, right? right. Yeah. When you're brand new and you're trying to break into that, you can't. So you just have to start small, start with the, you know, just know that you're going to be dealing with the smaller affiliates, try to really make it worth their while. Um, you know, if you can put some contest money up for them, do that. whatever you need to do to get that traction. But more importantly than that, you need to deliver a good product that sells, have good support and don't, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't do anything unprofessional with your affiliates, right? Always pay your affiliates when you say you're going to pay them. Uh, just be a good, uh, a good ethical business person. And then that will start to grow, right? The other thing that, um, so when you're new, you give away more. As you grow, you can, you know, a, an industry standard is 50%. So, right. you know, if you're doing a launch, you give away 50% of the front end, 50% of the upgrades. Um, but really it's up to you. Like if you're doing a recurring thing and you, you know, you want to do less percentages and all that stuff, there's really no kind of set standard for that. Or if you're selling higher ticket, there's really no kind of set standard for that. You just got to figure out what what it's worth to you to bring those new customers in and that will still make it worthwhile for the affiliate. Um, so it's you know, all about and then, knowing your numbers. Yeah, it's about knowing your numbers. And as you grow, like, you know, you can start doing bigger contests and, and attracting bigger affiliates because your list will grow, right? So you'll be able to do, you'll be able to support other people's product launches and you'll do good numbers. And when they see that, they'll want to support your product launches. So it all kinds of builds and grows. The only other tip that I can give you as well is, especially when you're new, you want to really, really pay attention to who is promoting who. Because just like um, in any business, sometimes you can find a smaller affiliate, but they know and are good friends with a bigger affiliate, right? right. And so you can you know, make a strategic plan to work with the smaller affiliate in the hopes that they're going to introduce you to the bigger affiliate. Right? right. And so, you know, just look at that stuff and who, you know, who seems to be promoting who and who seems to be hanging in the same digital circles. Right. And then, well, who could I help out or maybe do something for that might introduce me to those people and that kind of stuff. The other thing is live events, going to live events. You're just going to meet, I mean, you're just going to meet people and you're going to build bonds and relationships there. Um, especially if you're new, you know, going to a live event and meeting people and, and, and becoming friends with them and then coming back and saying, Hey, look, I'm putting out a product. Would you mind supporting it? A lot of that goes a long way too. Yeah, sure. So do you use the click funnels backpack when you do affiliates or do you use a different software? No. So because we do ours through warrior plus, Warrior Plus handles all that. So all Warrior right. Plus handles all the payment processing, the affiliate payouts, things like that. Um, yeah, so we use ClickFunnels for all of our product launches. So all of our sales pages, product memberships, and things like that are all done through ClickFunnels. But we don't really use ClickFunnels for any of the payment processing. Um, we we use other things, whether it's you know war, whether it's Warrior Plus or Stripe. Um, you know, we integrated it with Thrivecart, those types of things. Right. Okay. So the funnel that you used for your two comma club, was it a video to application or was it just a, a long form? Yeah, so we drive people to a free training. So we get them to opt in for a free training. And right. then there's uh, obviously email follow-up sequences and all that things. They watch the free training. The free training leads them to book a call, which then puts them in a queue. Um, you know, and that, that process is obviously to get them on the phone. So... Yeah, they fill out an application, we go through all that. And then there's email automations and things like that in the background for follow-up. And we also follow up with them manually as well. All right, okay. So your Facebook group, 
How long have you been building that one then? Because you've got, what did I say? Nearly 12,000 people in that. Yeah, we started that right when we started putting out products. And um, the reason why was because uh, I had, there's a, um, there's a Facebook group called the Cult of Copy, right? right. And uh, this guy, Colin, he's, he's kind of crazy, but it's an awesome Facebook group. And he had this product on, uh, I mean, he has a, hundreds of thousands of people in that group. And uh, he always talks about how great the group is and what you should do. And I thought, well, this seems like a pretty good idea. So when we started putting out products, we started a Facebook group. Um, and it's been a lot of, it, it's a, a lot of work. It was a lot of work in the beginning. Like we only put uh, people that buy our products in there. That's why All the right. group is only 12,000 because it's mainly buyers, right? All right, okay. And we spent a ton of time in the beginning, uh, especially Nick did, posting things in that group, responding to comments, like just like your customer support, you want to be answering people. And like we, we put a lot of effort into that, that group of being engaged and um, it's paid off because now the group is super engaged. People post things, they answer, they kind of police themselves. Uh, we do uh, a Facebook Live every Friday that we've been doing in there for forever. Um, and that group has really become, I mean, it's become a community, right? Yeah. And we get a ton of our Remote Millionaires members come out of that group. People come into that group and they love it. Like it's a great, it's just a great introduction to us and to what we're doing there. You know, we do a ton of... Um, you know, of win celebrations in there. So we have a thing, we call them shark shout outs. So we have our own lingo in there, right? Like <laughs> we have shark shout outs. We've got all this, like we really played up because we were in Maui, the offline sharks theme. So, you know, our members love that too. They, it kind of gives them their own language, right? Russell talks about that in some of his books, like yeah. give them their own language, give them their own sense of community. So we did that. Um, and like the shark shout outs, you know, people will post in our Facebook group, like, hey, you know, I sold a website deal for $500. I closed an SEO client for $297 a month. So we have someone from our team. They keep track of all of that stuff. And every Friday, they make a graphic with everybody's profile picture and, and what they sold and how much they made for it. And at the start of every live show, we do the shout outs. Like, hey, these are the people that, that made money last week. And we go through, we give them an applause, we give them a big deal. Um, and then we started just, I don't know why we didn't think of doing this sooner, but we just started keeping track of that revenue. So now we can say like last week, uh, our, the people in our Facebook group, they sold over $16,000 of marketing services, right? For, for 2022, since the start of 2022, they've sold like 364,000 and some odd in marketing services, right? Super, super powerful when people yeah. come into your community and see that and see like, these are real people, people in the, like, I mean, it's not us doing it, right? It's one thing to say, hey, we have a half a million dollar agency. Yeah. People go, oh, that's great. That's you guys. I can't <laughs> do that though. But when they see Bill and Jacqueline and that's when they see cool. Corey and and uh, all the, you know, Sherry, all those people posting the, the wins and the things they're getting from the courses and things we put out, it makes a big, big difference. Normal people, they can relate to that then, can't they? Yeah, and the amounts aren't crazy, right? You know, some of them are big, some of them are small, but we're like, we sell, we celebrate all of it in there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've, we've grown that out even further. Like we have a member of the week. So we, somebody who, if somebody's in our Facebook group and they're like posting stuff and answering questions and like being super active in the group, we want to reward that behavior right? We want people to be like, I mean, that's what we want. Those are the people we want. Yeah. So we put together this thing. So like we have this swag box, All right, okay. right? And so like every week we select a random member of the week and they get this swag box, right? What do they get in it? I can't tell you. <laughs> Love it. Let me tell you why I can't tell you. <laughs> Because, and this is interest. this is an interesting lesson in just how things happen in your group. So we started sending this to people and people started asking like, what was in it? Well, the people that were getting it wouldn't tell them 
And they said, oh, if you want it, you have to get member of the week. So now it's like this big running thing in our community that we don't tell what's inside the treasure chest, that we keep it a secret. So like we have members, like when they get this, they made videos and they posted them in our Facebook group. And they're like, oh, I got this great thing from the Tom's. You guys are going to love what's inside. And they open the lid. And then when they start taking things out, like they black it and blur it out so nobody can see what it is. And they cut their words out so you can't hear them. And like, it's hilarious, right? And uh, so we had no intention of that ever happening. It's just this thing that just sort of happened organically. Yeah. But it's fantastic for the community. Yeah, right? definitely. Yeah. And it really gets everybody. I mean, it just makes it fun, right? Everybody like, wants oh. one now. What's up? It's more FOMO. <laughs> it's more FOMO, isn't it? Okay. Give me your address after we're done and I'll send you. <laughs> you can hear there's things in there. <laughs> That's the thing. When people want, they don't know what's in it. They just want it because they just want to yeah. see what's in it. <laughs> yeah, they do. They're like, oh man, I just want it. So yeah, it's really awesome. <laughs> but people post, you know, people come in that group all the time and post their pictures with the box and Thanks and all that stuff. That's so great. it's really great. Yeah. So what do you think has been your biggest hurdle on your journey so far? Well, I, I had uh, the illusion of being an entrepreneur when I started all this. And the reality really set in quick that I knew very little about a lot of stuff, right? Like I've had to learn, I've had to learn a ton, you know, about, building a team and systems and processes. And, you know, as your business grows, there's a whole nother level of issues and problems that come about, yeah. right? Um, you know, then there's CPAs and lawyers and attorneys and operating agreements and profit and losses and, you know, and knowing your numbers. And <laughs> it's just, it just, it never ends. Like it just keeps coming and coming. Like it's, it's interesting. Cause it's almost like, you know, there was a time when we, like in the beginning, when we were just, you know, working hard every day to put out amazing products and that took up all our time. And uh, as we started to build a team to help us do those things, I thought, well, what are we going to do now? <laughs> right? Well, it turns out there's a whole lot of other stuff you have to do, <laughs> right? Like the relationships and the creating the content and the, just the direction of where the company's going and figuring out what you want to do. It, it just all starts to kind of, um, you just realize real quick, like, man, I don't know what I'm doing, you know? And so a lot of it has been learning on the job, you know, and that realization between, you know, the, the fantasy that I always had of an online, like I had this fantasy of an online business, right? Yeah. Like I'm going to have this, you have an online business. You just sit around, you don't do anything. Money comes in, <laughs> you know, people post videos about how great you are. You're creative, you create products. And it's like, no, there's a lot of other, there's a lot of other stuff behind that, right? Between, you know, getting better at executing things and figuring stuff out and keeping a finger on the market and, you know, and, and delivering quality experiences for your customers and talking to your customers and all that stuff. So there's, there's just been, you know, it's work, right? Yeah. It's work. It's work. So you and just smashed the dream, the illusion of sitting by the pool with the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, you can do that. Like there are times I've done that, right? Like I, I now have the ability to do that. Like yeah. I can pretty much go live anywhere. My businesses run whether I'm around them or not, right? Like um, I still work. I work hard, but it's on different things and it's on stuff that I really like to do, like these podcast interviews and stuff like that. But in the beginning, when you're getting something started, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of effort and you got to keep your foot on the gas if you really want to grow, right? I've seen so many people get good starts, but they just fall by the wayside because I think the reason they fall by the wayside is because they all of a sudden, they get that same realization. Oh my God, this is work, <laughs> right? And they're like, oh, I don't want to do work. I got into this so I could make some fast money. And you just have to, you have to get your mind, you get your mindset out of that. You have to shift yeah. your mindset and be like, look, it's work, but it's a different kind of work. It's a more rewarding work. Like I get to make my own schedule. I get to do like, I have a lot of independence and freedom because I put that time and effort in, in the beginning today. Yeah. Um, but there's no shortcut to get there, right? Like you have to put in that time and effort. Definitely. So has there any bit, 
has there been a time where you when you were first starting out that you thought about giving up oh my god about every week (laughs) (laughs) so what made you carry on what made you kept going where like you said all the other people fell by the wayside how did you carry on well i think one was i have a fantastic business partner and we really push each other to be better right and we have you know one of the things that made our partnership really great is we had different skill sets so you know he was more of a systems process technical side guy i was more of the produce the content make the sales videos marketing strategy kind of guy And so when we started, you know, that's what we did. I created the courses and the content and he did the graphics and the funnels and set everything up on the technical side. As we've grown over the years, we've both had to expand our skill sets and learn more and and get better. Um, But, you know, just having, you know, having a business partner that, that we're, you know, we, we are both motivated. And so if I'm not feeling motivated, he'll keep me motivated. If he's not, I'll keep him motivated. Um, And we just, you know, we just keep going and keep growing. And plus having success really motivates you too. Right. And you start to think, Oh, I want to do this. I want to do more. I want to like, this looks like that'd be fun. And I'd like to be able to do that. And so, you know, that's where a lot of that stuff comes from where you're just looking around and you're like, Oh, you know, I think a podcast would be fun to do. So you do one. Right. Um, yeah. So, you know, that, you know, just, you know, just sticking to it. Right. Like, and knowing that there's, there's not a shortcut, like, okay. Yeah. I, I've always, I've always like, uh, like been able to think about it as like, okay, look, I'm willing to do a lot in the short term. If it means I'm going to get a really big result in the long term. So I don't mind working a lot in the short term, especially if it's something that I enjoy and I'm having fun with. Yeah. I don't mind working a lot in the short term, knowing that it's going to pay off in the long term. Right. And so today what we're seeing is the payoff of that, right? Like we worked a lot in the short term and we're seeing the payoff of that now of how we're able to operate and and do, and, you know, my business partner, he's been able to just travel around with his wife. Like they've been all over the place and they just sort of go here wherever they want. And, uh, you know, but we couldn't do that in the beginning. You know, we had to, we had to get to that point. So what do you class as your biggest achievement so far? Hmm. Man, well, you know, look, just uh, crossing, crossing the million dollar mark was something that like I wanted to happen, but I honestly, like if I really didn't think it was possible, right? Like I just didn't think, I don't know, like, that's just not something that happens to me. Right. And even today, like when I, you know, when I mentioned earlier, like, look, our, our business is multiple millions a year. Like that just sounds so foreign to me. I'm like, do I really, like, I almost like when we get off this podcast, I'm probably going to log into the books just to make sure I'm not lying. Right. Because (laughs) it does not feel like, it doesn't feel like that. I don't think that's like, you know what I mean? Like, but it, it's the reality. Like, oh, I have this multi-million dollar a year business. I'm not, it's crazy. Like, it's just crazy to me. And, uh, you know, now we're looking to just continue to grow that and keep doing great things and help other people do the same stuff. Right. Yeah. Like I really believe what Jay Abrahams said when he said, you know, when you can do something, you have a fiduci- fiduciary responsibility to look behind you and help someone else do the same thing. And, uh, I really believe that, like, I would really, I I mean, like, I, I want, like, if I can do this, anybody can do it. And so, you know, I'm willing to help whoever I can to do it as well. Cool. So do you have a morning routine? Oh, that is a great question. So (laughs) morning routines, I did, I, I, uh, yes, for a long time. So I do have a morning routine and I think morning routines are, are super important, right? Um, just because for me, like I am a, uh, when I say becoming an entrepreneur is a process, I am a naturally undisciplined person, right? Like somebody says work, I'm like ducking. Like, I don't want it to hit me. I don't want to catch it. Like, <laughs> like that, my natural state of being is like, oh, let's just do whatever we want today. We'll figure the rest out tomorrow. 
right? And um, that's a problem when you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. That's a problem. You have to be disciplined. You have to, you know, be consistent. You have to do those things. So, you know, for me, uh, having a morning routine, doing those, when I started doing those things uh, on a daily basis, I didn't realize uh, how it was going to make a difference in my, how much of a difference it was going to make in my life. I just, other successful people said you should have one. So I thought, well, I'll give it a try and see what happens. But what happened was, as I started doing that routine consistently every day, all of a sudden I started becoming able to stick to other commitments, right? right? I was building up habits, right? I was, I was slowly building up discipline to be able to do the things that I needed to do. So, um, I think a lot of that stuff, you know, I always used to think like, oh, well, I don't like when it comes to the small things in my life, I don't need to be disciplined because I will be disciplined for the important things. The reality was I have to be disciplined on the small things to be able to be disciplined for the important things. Does that make sense? Okay. I get you. Yeah. So, so what goes into your morning routine then? Are you going to share it with us? Sure. So I get up every morning and uh, the first thing I do is I drink a big glass of water. Okay. And then I go brush my teeth. Right. Cause I'm like, I got to get chugging. Right. So I do that. Uh, I do some meditation in the mornings and then I spend the first hour on, I call it Tom time, Tommy time. Right. Like I spend the first hour working on the things that are important to me, doing things like writing, things like that or reading uh, some type of something to, you know, sometimes I'll read business books just to get my head in the right space for what I want to do today. Right. Um, Yeah. That's, that's, and then I go to the gym. So I go to the gym. And do you get up early? Are you a a. 5am-er? So I used to get up early. (laughs) I used to get up early Uh, in Maui. I would get up early, but since we moved to Las Vegas, I don't. No. I mean, I get up, I have to take the kids to school in the morning. So I, I mean, I get up at 645, but then I take them to school and do that stuff after. Okay. Okay. I've got one last question for you. Okay. If you're going to be an animal for 24 hours, what would you be and why? Hmm. That's a great question. I think I'd want to be a monkey. So I could swing from the trees and like go all through all the stuff. That'd be fun. (laughs) I thought you were going to say a shark. (laughs) I could be a shark too. Well, you know, sharks, like they never sleep, right? And uh, they're constantly on the move. So they're great for business, but I don't know if I were going to, if I were going to do something, I'd want to be, I'd probably want to be, do something that would be a little more fun. Yeah. I think monkeys We always say, uh, there was a saying I always heard that was like, uh, be good unless you can be a shark, then just be a shark. <laughs> 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 okay, so I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day today to chat with me. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on, Paul. I really enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. Awesome. If anybody's interested in finding out more about offline sharks, where do they need to go? They can just go to offlinesharks.com. You'll see it there. Or if they want to check out the Facebook group, uh, we actually we recently renamed it. So it's actually remote uh, digital market. I think remote digital marketing agency owners buy offline sharks, but you should be able to find it that way. That's a mouthful, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can find us on Facebook, join the group, or just go to offlinesharks.com. You'll see all the information there too. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please take a moment to leave us a five-star review and subscribe to the podcast on your podcast software. It really helps us rank the podcast and get more listeners. And if you're over on YouTube, please subscribe and hit the bell. Every Friday, 8am GMT, we release a brand new episode. And until then, have a good one.